Hello ladies and gentlemen, MarauderyX here with another episode of Gaming Nostalgia Stories, where I sit here and play a little bit of game and talk a little bit about, you know, my personal history with this game. And this game, in particular, is Soul Calibur, the original on the Dreamcast. Now, this game had a lot of, uh, of significance to me because it blew my mind. <laughs> um, <clears throat> just, just to, to be completely honest about it, it blew my mind. Uh, this game, there was a movie theater near, uh, near my house growing up where, you know, me and my friends would go hang out. And it, at that movie theater, they had an arcade machine of Soul Calibur. And I'd played, uh, Soul Edge before, but it didn't, like, it was fun, but it didn't grasp me the same way that this game did. Uh, Soul Calibur just, you know, it, it was different. Uh, just something about it, the, the visuals, the music, the character designs just all felt so amazing and compelling. You win. And, uh, like, this, this version of Siegfried is my favorite character design, like, ever. Like, he's the black armor, the sword, everything just looks so badass. Um, but the, the arcade version of this that we played, uh, it was kind of blocky, it, it just didn't seem, you know, it didn't seem like what what we played on the Dreamcast. It just seemed so different. And uh, we, we were beyond impressed. It, it, it blew us away when we got the Dreamcast that Christmas. Uh, the Dreamcast came out 9999, which we thought was going to be the day of Lavos. But thankfully, Chrono and company won, and uh, he never showed up. But instead, we got the, the Dreamcast, and I, I got it for Christmas that year, and with uh, Sonic Adventure and Soul Calibur. And Soul Calibur became our kind of settle and smash type title. We played this game, you know, a anytime we, we had, you know, differing opinions or different, like, no, this is, this is how we're going to settle an argument, whether we were right or wrong, because it's something we all played. Uh, we'd either all played it in the arcades, or now that we had, a, like, several of us had a Dreamcast, uh, we we all had some experience with this game. So it was one of the first games that we could all say, okay, we are somewhat, you know, proficient in, and it it became a thing. But all the the, the graphics to it blew us away. Between, like I said, the the arcade version and the the home version, and like it, it was such impressive graphics that even my mom recognized that that it was you know a step above what she was used to seeing. She came uh, came into my room Christmas morning after I uh, we'd done all the the present exchange and everything, and uh, she looked at it and was like, "This is you know very different." Like, she's like, is this the new game you got? And I'm like, yeah, this is... This is what I got for Christmas. And it just... It surprised her, because she's like, this is really pretty. It's... The, the graphics look nice, and the music, and... Just, it... It amazed her. Someone who has a very limited background in gaming was impressed with the, the quality of the visuals. So... Yeah, it it became it was it was kind of a, a phenomenon because, like I said, the the first game in the series was Soul Edge, but even then the the rest of the series became Soul Calibur. So that tells you just how much of an impact this had. So to continue instead of Soul Edge, it's now Soul Calibur through I think they're up to six now. I've uh, I I lost interest after a while in the series. It just didn't do much for me. But it, it and it, it became a thing that since we all played it so much that uh, we started doing you know interesting uh, interesting special matches. Like we we would do matches that were 
uh, we would turn our life into infinite so that we couldn't die from uh, a KO and we'd have to learn how to ring people out with every character. So we had to become proficient in not being able to kill your opponent but to be able to ring out your opponent. Or the exact opposite, we'd turn our health as low as possible to try to kill each other in one hit, just like a, a first strike type. And that's how we entertained ourselves. We, we spent hours playing this game, hours unlocking characters and stages and uh, all of the, the extras. That this is really the first fighting game I became that involved with. I, I was not a fan of fighting games uh, really until this game. It just, just never, never became a thing. And with this game, it's I, I also became a completionist. It's something that I, I had to do. Uh, I, I had to, to unlock everything for this game. And I wasn't the only one. Uh, all of my friends were the same. Uh, I said we had, I think there were two or three of us that had a Dreamcast, and we all had the same feeling about this game. It's like, okay, well, come over to my house, bring your memory card, we'll unlock everything, and you know, save it to everyone's. We all make progress by just going over to each other's houses and just playing the game. So that anything that we had unlocked, we could share with everyone else. So... It... It, it became a group experience. And, like, the Dreamcast had, you know, four controller ports. It wasn't the first console to do that, but it was the first console that really brought a lot of us together for party. Like, the N64 had some good party games and good multiplayer games, but it... it Soul Calibur did it on a, a much different level. And we we just became obsessed with it. And it's it's a game that I haven't played nearly enough lately. It's something that I, I need to, to play more of. But it for for several years. It was it, it was a defining game for the Dreamcast. It still is a defining game for the Dreamcast. Any uh, Dreamcast owner who does not own a copy of this game is doing themselves a disservice. It's it, it may not look quite as pretty as you know more modern fighters, but it still has that spark. It is still still very impressive, and there's just so much to it that. I mean, look look at all these things that you've got. You've got uh, mission battles, arcade versus team battle, time attack, survival, a museum to chronicle all of the things you've unlocked. It, it's just... Welcome back to the stage of history. I, I, I can't even really articulate it well enough. Just how awesome this game was at the time. And that it was... It was the defining... One of the defining titles for the Dreamcast, which had way too short of a lifespan, but the fact that, you know, there is still a very dedicated user base to the Dreamcast that are, are still developing games for it today, like uh, uh, Pure Solar and uh, da, um, Elysian Shadows and... The, the numerous shoot 'em ups that I've, I've seen come out in the last several years just are. I, I can't even begin to say how impressive it is that there's still that dedicated of a community to this game. Well, not just this game, but to this console. And this game just showed right off the bat what the console could do. It. it it, it was beyond impressive, and that's why the, the Dreamcast. Uh, I read somewhere that it has the the con uh, the nickname of uh, the Undead Console because even though it's no longer getting official support, it's getting more than its fair share of independent support. And the fact that people use it as a, a, a benchmark: if you can develop for this, you, you can you can develop well as an indie developer for other consoles and other mediums. So. 
Uh, I've, I've got nothing bad to say about this game. It... It was... Just a, a game that not just me, but numerous friends were able to get behind and, and spend hours upon hours playing. And we were just in awe of the graphics, the music, the, the general feel. Just so impressive. So, uh, that's basically everything that I've got for Soul Calibur. Um, it, it came out... It was one of the, the few games... Uh, that I got right after release in that time frame. Uh, I got a, a Dreamcast that the year it came out. It was it was something that I just I had to get, and this was one of the games that just uh, made that purchase a, a requirement. So uh, I w I really will never forget looking at the uh, the arcade version that we played on probably a lower end Naomi board versus the the home version that we played and eh, I I'm never gonna be able to, to forget that like I, I'm a, a staunch believer that graphics don't make the games but they can certainly help and this game this game did it. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I don't know how many episodes or how many parts this project's going to be, but everything so far has been in chronological order, so I'm just going to keep going, and I will see you guys in the uh, the next episode of Gaming Nostalgia Stories. And again, I want to hear yours. If you have a specific story about this game or um, another game in this franchise or another fighting game, just I want to hear your your nostalgic stories. It, it's you know, it's what helps make this uh, this series work and just generate you know generate really good conversation about this medium and how it can can cause memories that will stick with you for a very long time. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next installment. Till then, later, everyone.